to Sunday school. So I'm dressed like this today because we are going back thousands of years in time for our Sunday school lesson today. And we are going to be covering a really long period of time in Israel's history. This is going to help us to better understand what is going to be going on in our next couple of Sunday school lessons as we talk about some really famous exiles in Israel's history. You may have heard of them, people like Daniel. I know you know about Daniel in the lion's den. We're gonna be learning a little bit about that. And maybe you've heard of Queen Esther. We're also gonna be learning about her. Well, have you ever thought about how patient God is I'm really glad he's patient because if I'm honest, I need God to be patient with me about every day. You see, there are times that I rush around and I forget all about God's blessings. I don't thank him. And I even make the same mistakes over and over and over again. So I'm really glad that God is patient with me. And so today we're going to talk about how God was patient with his people as they made the same mistakes over and over and over again. And they tested his patience over and over and over again. And then we're also gonna talk about how much God's people needed a savior and how much we need a savior too. In today's lesson, we're gonna be using craft materials during our lesson instead of at the very end of the lesson like we normally do. So if you received a craft mailer from Mary, I'm gonna need for your lesson today for you to get out. First of all, this cloak. You'll also need the map that looks like this. And she should have sent you a little bag that has some popsicle sticks and some beads. For at the end of the lesson, you're gonna need this. It looks like a cross that has two sides on it. From your house, if you could find a red and a blue crown, some scissors, a glue stick or some tape, and some markers. And also, it would really help if you had a Bible for today's lesson. So, if you want to pause the video and go find those things, I'll meet you back here. Our first story today is found in 1 Kings chapter 12. So if you have a Bible, you may wanna pull it out because later in the lesson, we're gonna look up one of our verses. So this story comes before some of the stories that we've been talking about recently. It happened before the healing of Naaman, if you remember that story from a few weeks ago, and before that blinded army story. But we're gonna talk about it now because it's important to understand this story um, for what's coming up next. So if you find the cloak um, from your mailer, we're gonna be using that during our story. You're gonna need a red crown and a blue crown when we get to the part of the story where we'll be coloring the cloak. Do you remember ever hearing about King Solomon? He was a very wise king. Let's see here from my, my picture Bible. When King Solomon died, his son named Rehoboam became king. And the people told Rehoboam, your father Solomon made us work really hard. You can see this beautiful temple that he built. And he made them work really hard to help build the temple. And the people said, we will gladly serve you if you make our work easier. Rehoboam thought about it and he asked his friends for advice. Then he replied to the people, my father, Solomon, didn't make you work hard enough. I'll make you work even harder. Do you think the people liked that answer? This was not the response they were hoping for. The people from the northern tribes of Jerusalem went home. So I want you to find the part of the cloak where it says the northern kingdom, called Israel, up here. And I want you to color it blue with your blue crown. They decided they didn't want to serve a king like Rehoboam. So they made a man named Jeroboam king. So I want you to just go ahead and color that blue for me while I'm telling you the rest of the story. Go ahead and do that while I'm talking. Only two tribes remained under Rehoboam's rule, 
and that was the southern tribe of Judah and Benjamin. And we are gonna color on the cloak the southern tribe red. So if you need to pause the video at this point and do that, you can. Okay, so it'll look like this when you're done. Rehoboam didn't like being king of only two tribes. He planned to attack the northern kingdom of Israel, but God sent a prophet to stop him. Draw a frowny face with a crown by the southern kingdom and write an R under it for Rehoboam. The prophet had a message from God. Let's look in the Bible to see what the message was. If you turn in your Bible to 1 Kings 12, 24, if you look, it's toward the front of the Bible. So we're looking at 1 Kings 12, 24, and you can pause the video if you wanna go find it. 1 Kings 12, verse 24, and I'll read it to you. This is what the prophet said. He said, Say to them, the Lord says you must not go to war against your brothers, the Israelites. Every one of you should go home. I made all these things happen. So he said that to Rehoboam. So Rehoboam said, decided to go home and he went home. He decided not to fight against the Northern Kingdom. Well, Jeroboam was now king of Israel. That's this part, the top part. Typically, the people of Israel would travel to Jerusalem to worship God at the temple, but Jeroboam was worried that if they kept going to Jerusalem, they would start thinking of Rehoboam as their leader again. So Jeroboam came up with a plan. He made two golden calves and made an announcement to the northern tribes. It is very inconvenient for you to travel all the way down to Jerusalem to worship at the temple. Look, these golden calves are the gods who saved us and brought the ancestors out of Egypt. Worship them instead. Now I want you to think for a minute. Is that true? Did those calves actually save the people and bring them out of Egypt or did God? What Jeroboam did was wrong. He lied and that was a sin. And God said, don't worship any other gods before me. So I want you to draw a frowny face like I did, right there, at the top where the Northern Kingdom is. And I want you to write a J for Jeroboam. See, those calves did not lead the people out of Egypt, God did. And Jeroboam was leading the people in worship to false gods, and that was wrong. Okay, so you can see what happened here was the kingdom of Israel at one point was all one kingdom and it separated into two kingdoms, the Northern Kingdom, which was also known as Israel, and the Southern Kingdom, which was called Judah. And they had two kings. So I want you to take your cloak, which I know you've probably done a really nice job of coloring, but we're gonna tear it in half to show how the kingdom was torn in two. So this was a point in time in Israel's history where God's kingdom became two kingdoms, okay? Very good. Now I want you to find your map. So the first thing you will do on your map is you will circle the word Israel in blue. And that is the Northern Kingdom. And then you'll go over here and color one of the little guys blue. And he is going to represent the kingdom of Israel. And then you will take a red crown and you will circle Judah, which is the southern kingdom. And then go over and color the guy's cloak in red. And he is going to represent the Southern Kingdom. Okay. The next thing I want you to do um, with your map is to take some scissors and we're going to cut along these two arrows. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to fold the paper in half like this and just make a little cut. to get started. 
then open it up and cut along that arrow. There were lots and lots of people living in Israel. And lots and lots of people living in Judah. We'll have one little man to represent them. So there's the popsicle sticks that we sent to you. And I have some tape. And I'm going to tape each little man to his own popsicle stick. You can also use a glue stick. a popsicle stick that works too. Okay, so when you're done with your map work, you will have your two little guys cut out and taped to a popsicle stick. You will have Israel circled in blue, Judah circled in red, and then your two arrows cut out. All right, let's talk about what happened in the Northern Kingdom. From the time that Jeroboam became king over Israel, he and the other kings that followed after him sinned against God. You see, they didn't worship God. Instead, they led the people into the worship of false gods. They built altars to false gods, and they did all kinds of really terrible things, and they even hurt the people of God. And... God kept warning Israel to follow only him and to turn against what they were doing and start to follow him. And um, Israel didn't listen. So after many, many years, God allowed the country of Assyria to come and to take the people of Israel captive and to take them into Assyria. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your map and take your little blue guy because he is going to represent Israel and put him into the map from behind and we're gonna move him from Israel all the way up into Assyria to show that he's been taken captive. Then I want you to take your map and take your little red guy because he's going to represent uh, Judah and we're gonna place him in here into Jerusalem because that is all that is going to be left of God's people in the promised land. All right, now let's find out what happened to Judah. That's our little guy here. Let's find out what happened to Judah. So the first king we were talking about, Rehoboam, remember in our story? Rehoboam, well, he was not a very good king either. And his son was bad too. They both led the people to worship false gods. They built altars to false gods and they also did all kinds of bad things. And for a while, it looked like the kings of, um, of Judah were going to be just as bad as those kings of Israel. And then after a while, God uh, raised up some good kings. And then there were some bad kings. So it was kind of like good king, bad king, good king, bad king for a long time. 
And um, so God kept calling the people to turn and to do good. And God sent his prophets, prophets like Jeremiah, to say to the people, I want you to turn and I want you to follow only me and I want you to, to be good. And um, the people, after hundreds and hundreds of years, it looked like they were not going to listen to God. So God allowed his judgment to come against Judah. And God sent um, a king called Nebuchadnezzar, and he was from Babylon. And he came, and at first he came, and he just took 10,000 of the people um, from Judah away. And one of those people was named Daniel, who we're going to learn about, Daniel and his friends. And they were taken as captives to Babylon. So what I want you to do is I want you to um, go on your map, and we're going to oops, first take our little red guy to Babylon. So there he is, he's going to Babylon. And then um, after a little while, uh, some people still had remained in Jerusalem, but then Nebuchadnezzar came back and there was a final battle and he knocked down the city walls, he destroyed the temple, and the remainder of the people were taken to Babylon. And only the very poorest people were left in Jerusalem, but basically Jerusalem was pretty much destroyed. And so it was a very, very sad time in Judah, a terrible time for the people because they were taken captive. They were taken into what's called exile where they had to leave and it was awful. Um, but God did not completely abandon his people. He made a promise um, from Jeremiah so he said that after 70 years, the people were gonna, some of the people were gonna be allowed to return. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah also said something that was really amazing. And um, he said, we're going to find it in Jeremiah 23, 6. So if you have your Bible, you can pause the screen and um, go find Jeremiah 23, 6. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Now, who is Jeremiah talking about? The Lord, our righteous Savior. Now, this he said this about 600 years before Jesus was born, but he was talking about Jesus. Yes, what an amazing thing. He was talking about Jesus, the king who would come to save, the king who would not disappoint like all of those other kings of Israel in our story today. He was the king who would come to save us from our sins. For our last craft today, you will need the cross from your mailer, the yarn and beads, and you will also need some scissors, glue stick, tape, some markers. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is you'll just need to color this with some markers as I have done here, and cut it out. Okay? After you've done that, so you can pause the screen while you do that. After you've done that, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to take um, one of the crosses, either one, take some tape, and I want you to take the yarn, And just tape one side of the yarn to the top of the cross, just right here in the corner. So right here. Just gonna tape that. And that is so that when you string the beads, they won't fall off the yarn. So, got that there. And now you're going to just string the beads onto the yarn. Like this, just string all of them right in there. Okay, now I'm not gonna do it to save time, but you're gonna string all of the beads onto your yarn. When you've finished with that, again, pause the screen while you do that, you're going to go and tape the other corner of the yarn right here. Okay, 
When you have finished taping that on there, the beads will all hang down in front. Okay, now I want you to use glue stick and glue all um, on the cross. And we're gonna just put glue all over so that I can glue the two crosses together. All right, so I've put glue all over the cross and I'm going to just stick them together. If you don't have glue, you can just tape the edges together. Okay. So it'll look like this when you're finished, but of course you'll have all the beads on. And then you can use this to remember um, what Jeremiah said about how Jesus is our righteous savior. And the, our Bible verse is from Psalm, he forgives all my sins. And this is a great thing you can hang on your doorknob. Thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna close us in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that you are patient with us all the time, Lord. And I thank you that you do want us to turn to you and that you do forgive our sins, God. Lord, I pray for us as we go this week, Lord, um, that we would be mindful of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye.